I've got a really special video here because there's a new thing in town um, to do with curbs and obviously if you're going to deal with curbs you're going to be dealing with surfacing but today let's focus on curbs and a fantastic new feature in Onshape. I'm going to start with this situation here where I've got a couple of sketches and I've got another sketch over here with a really influential point on it right so I've called this the sketch influencer and here's sketch number one. Now in building this I'm going to you know perhaps create another curve and I'm going to make it a bridging curve and I'll do it from these and so we've got you know our bridging curve in here. Now depending on the connectivity I choose you know there'll be a different number of control points that I can play with or control. And you know, tangent only gives me these two that I can pull on here but if I go to curvature you know, there's a couple of points and I can pull on both of them, maybe even G3, right? So let's go all the way up to G3 to give three points to try and manipulate. What the problem is, is that try as I might, I can't get this shape exactly the way that I want it. And let alone that this point here is significant to me and I'm going to try and use it to influence the shape. So you're kind of stuck, right? Um, let's... Uh, Let's leave it at that. The new feature that I'm talking about is under the curve tools and it's called edit curve. And this has some fantastic superpowers that I'm going to go through a bunch of different examples with. This first one here, let's start the edit curve. Now the edit curve feature looks simple and it applies an enormous amount of power that's in it. I can pick any curve like this and you'll see that it immediately extracts its control points. I could do a number of things to it, including editing the control points. So if I edit any of these control points here, remember these, are, these were created due to the G3 connection. So I need one, two, three points each side. So I can't move any of them. But what I can do is I can elevate the curve. So I can elevate the curve's degree. And by going to the eight degree, degree curve, I've added a new control point in here. You see here? There was no control point in before, but now there is. And I can keep adding you know, degree elevation um, to my heart's content. So this curve edit, edit curve tool will allow me to immediately elevate the curve, but that's not all. I'm also going to edit the control point. So I'm going to pick on this directly, and it will allow me to manipulate it. And you can see here, the new curve has a slightly different shape. But I'm not changing the original control points, I'm just changing the new one. And what's more, I can use another piece of geometry as a reference for it. So I'm going to use that vertex there. And I can move relative to that vertex if I want. If I want to bring it 2.7 millimeters back in the x direction relative to that point, or I can just go zero. So now this point is influencing, like I wanted to, the shape of the curve. Final thing with this is that it's a NURBS curve, so I can change the weighting. And you can see here the influence of this point now, if I heavily weight it, um, you know, maybe put a, a, a very, very heavily weighting, you can see how it's affecting the curvature. Of course, you should have curvature turned on for these kinds of operations, and you can see the dynamic update of what's going on. So that is us manipulating this original bridging curve and now the now the magic really starts if we look over in the curve list we've only got that one curve that was created by the bridging curve this edit curve didn't copy it and create a new one it actually just basically did a direct edit of the original bridging curve now this is going to have huge downstream uh, benefits and I'll show you that in some other demonstrations in a second. But for now, um, that's, the first, uh, that's the first use case. Now if I go back and change the influencing sketch and use the final button of course, you'll see there that I can, it, it's, it's staying attached you know, uh, to, that, um, to that influencing point here. So we've got an incredible amount of power now to have associative and even parametric updates of this um, with a very free form kind of approach to creating these curves. All right, so that's the first
basic demonstration. Let me show you some of the other powers that you can extract from this edit curve feature. If we have a curve like this, it's not very smooth. Well, it's kind of smooth, but it's not very uh, not be f not very fair. Let's let's um, use that word. I can use the edit curve. Now, again, this could be a bridging curve or any other curve, an imported curve. But in this case, it's a sketch curve. Now I'm going to use my edit curve feature again. Pick it. The first thing it does is it extracts the control points. And again, I could move these control points. You know, if I really wanted to, you know, I could click on any one of them. And you'll see here that we're, you know, maintaining the moves down here in this list. I can get rid of those moves and clear back to how I started like this. What I'm going to do here is a really interesting thing, which is to reapproximate this curve. I'm going to choose this approximation add on uh, control here. And you can see here that I can control the target degree, the number maximum number of control points I want along here and also the tolerance. So perhaps I want to do something like a, uh, a tolerance of, sorry, um, 99 control points. You know, I can put that up really high. And now we get a very close approximation of it. But now I'm going to use a much coarser tolerance, maybe even one millimeter. And you can start to see the curve, uh, yeah, over here, starting to pull away from the original. If I can you know, up that tolerance even more, You'll see here we have the effect of smoothing out this curve, in fact, of fairing the curve. And I've got here, uh, it's actually only going to use six control points at degree three to achieve the tolerance that I'm looking for uh, at that target degree. So that's a pretty incredible, uh, powerful tool to be able to use uh, as well, especially if you do have imported curves. And we'll get to that as an example in a minute. I'm going to show you a whole bag, a cornucopia of different tools that you can uh, uh, they can use the edit curve for. So that's one. It kind of looks like a cornucopia, right? This one. Here's a uh, here's a little helical curve that I created using the normal helix tool up here, and I sketched normal to the end of the curve, a little cross section and profile that I swept down the helix. Now. How can edit curve be used in an interesting way here? Well, what we can do is we can roll back to the point where we created the helix. And I'm going to use my edit curve at this point. Choose the curve. I'm going to reapproximate it with a much better approximation at degree five with 35 control points. Right, that's a much better approximation to use. But that's not all. Uh, and we could do that like that, you know, and then, of course, the sketch and the sweep will update, even though I've made these changes to the curve. There's some magic in there that I'll come back to. I'm going to edit this curve edit that we made and do one more thing, which is to planarize the curve. There's a whole bunch of options you can use to planarize onto specific planes, like the XY plane here. And we're not just projecting, we're actually moving the control points onto that plane. And you can see there's a few other options you, to use a custom plane. You could use a mate connector uh, to become the target of that. Or you can use a best fit. Now, best fit will be used uh, somewhere else when I show you that in a minute. These are typical. So if we leave this planarization and reapproximation, you'll see here that just like magic, the sweep and the sketch still survive, right? You don't have to reattach uh, to or change the identities or reselect things. It's because the curve edit feature operates directly on the body that was created by this original curve. And it allowed it to change the curve, but not change the body, not change the, the identity of the body. So that means I can suppress this or unsuppress it, or make further changes to it without fear of anything that's attached to it from failing downstream. Pretty incredible. Two more examples. This one here is an interesting one. So if we go all the way back to the beginning, this is an import and it came from uh, a third party CAD system. And if we look at the curve quality of this curve here, it's extremely poor. And one of the normal things that you would do, and indeed the training course for this, would be to recreate this curve. 
create a whole new curve. But let's not do that right now. Let's just go ahead with some normal modeling operations. Let's do a, a couple of uh, ruled surfaces. And after the ruled surfaces, I'm going to create this intersection curve. And I remember, an intersection curve, you take one surface and you take another surface, and it will create a curve where that intersection takes place. Now, if I have a look at the curve quality of that intersection, it is extremely poor as well. You can see how it twists around and it's got a very bad parameterization. Um, but even if we persist and keep going with that and do another set of operations to create another intersection curve and then you know, go on even a little bit further to create a boundary surface, the effect is that bad things upstream flow downstream. Right? So a bad curve back here became a bad intersection curve here, which has become a bad boundary surface. So nothing that you do in the boundary surface is really going to fix this. It's all to do with bad curves. Fortunately, and really one of the main drivers for this feature, is you're going to be able to edit those curves. Even this one, remember, is an, in, uh, an imported curve. So we can go back, and as long as we roll back to before the point where we did the boundary surface, we could use the edit curve feature. And let's pick this intersection curve here. And you'll see already how bad the parameterization is. It's got a lot of control points, 129 control points. They're not evenly spaced. It's a terrible curve to be using as the basis for high quality surfaces. But what we can do, of course, is use the approximation or basically rebuild, reparameterize this curve. And I'm going to use a degree five curve with a maximum of six control points, which is a single span curve, which it will tell you up here. Now that this single span curve is right, and we could be looking at uh, the curvature of this. It's a nice curvature, except for the fact if we look down the curve itself, you see how the curvature comb is kind of a little bit twisted and out of plane. For this reason, we would might want to use the planarization control. And you can see how these things kind of add up. You can do an approximation first, then you can elevate them, maybe then do what I'm going to do here, which is a planarization. So keep your eye on both the control points themselves and also the curvature combs out here when I do planarize. Okay, so now you can see here, I've used a best fit planarization. And it's found the plane that, that passes the best way through all of these control points. And you see how nice that control um, grid is now. You know, it's nice and evenly spaced. We're following all of our golden rules, single span, nicely placed, minimum number of control points. And if we really wanted to make a few more tweaks to it, we can still come in here and again, tweak that that third or fourth uh, control point along there, give it a little bit of extra breathing room, change the curvature to be a little bit nicer. And now we have that. Now, if we have a look at the boundary surface that we created from there, we're going to do it sort of one more time. Uh, we do the, the edit curve on the bottom. We're going to do the same sort of thing. Reapproximate, do a degree five curve, single span, planarize it. Tells me our new curve. We're good. And I'm going to just undo, I mean, it's roll forward. And so we've got our boundary surface here. And without doing anything extra to that boundary surface, you see how now it is such a nice, clean, um, you know, single span actually uh, in this direction, degree five here and degree three across here. So the edit curve, and again, we can suppress these and go back to that bad parameterization, or we can unsuppress them and have the good one without having to do anything inside the boundary surface feature itself to repick, reselect new curves because there aren't new curves. They are the original curves. They've just been edited a little bit. One final demo um, we've got here. Now, I've actually got some curves that have been created sort of computationally for some uh, blade profiles. Okay, so these curves, and it's an interesting one because if I look at the curvature of these initially, they look pretty good. Okay, so that looks pretty good. That looks pretty good. 
So I'm going to go and create a loft through these five. And it immediately looks a little suspect down here. The shadows on the loft <clears throat> look a little bit crazy. All right. And in fact, if I turn on zebra stripes and put on high quality mode, it looks terrible. It's really terrible. This is a horrible quality loft. Now, it's not the loft feature that's causing this horrible quality. It's actually those curves. So let's go back and have a closer look at those curves. And we can use the edit curve feature to try and fix them. So if we come in here and do the edit curve on one of these, <clears throat> you'll see immediately that the parameterization again is poor, right? It means that these control points and the knots underneath are not uniform. Um, they're kind of all over the place. And even though, you know, that first comb looked okay, the parameterization underneath it is going to cause that loft feature to have a real hard time. So just like before, I'm going to do a degree five curve and I'm going to use an option here to keep the start and end derivative, which is to keep the tangency at the start and the end of this original curve, because that's probably going to be significant for me. Now in doing that, you can see how we've cleaned up this curve completely. Uh, we could even probably go less control points if we really wanted to, but that's you know, probably enough for now. Now, before I show you the effect, I'm actually going to do one more, <laughs> one more thing I should have shown before. Uh, if, I, if I try and thicken this loft, you'll see how bad things happen. And you can see here that what this single surface has now become a whole bunch of different patches, including one which looks really, really, really implausible. And this is what happens when you take bad curves, create to use that and create a bad loft, and then do further things like splitting, booleans, thickening, all those sorts of operations. This is another reason why you really should concentrate on the curves as the root of any problems, get them clean, and then have a good time downstream. So to sort of cut a, you know, not a very long story, but a five edits of those curves story short, I'm going to unsuppress them and you'll see what the effect this has on the thicken. In fact, it cleans it up completely. If we go back just to the surface itself and have a look at the zebra stripes, uh, it's a really am amazing comparison. If I suppress, you know, this is using the bad curves and this is using the good curves there. So those are a quick sort of run through of some of the various options inside edit curve. Um, I think we covered most of the options there. Now the good thing for it's like a bonus points here is that the, the, the feature for edit curve is going to be available for custom feature writers to use. It's in feature script. So if you really wanted to, you could do a really simple custom feature like this is the entirety of it, 46 lines long, including a bunch of spaces. And what I'm doing is I'm calling on the edit curve or part of the edit curve function, which is the only part that I'm calling on is the elevation. So if you're following along in feature script here, and if you've written your own custom features, you'll see it's pretty obvious what I'm doing. I'm calling the feature. I'm referring to a wire body ID and I'm doing something, which is I'm going to elevate the curve to a new degree. And the new degree is the, the input that I've put up here. So let's have a quick look uh, at what that might look like. Um, so if I hide the loft, my new feature, which is called elevate, very simple. I can pick an existing curve and I can elevate it to some other degree. Now I've deliberately made this really, really simple um, just to show you that using the foundations that we've put in place, it's going to unlock a whole lot of um, options for uh, custom feature writers. Imagine being able to take any of these parts, you know, the approximation bit, the elevation, which is what I just showed you, the planarization or even the edit control points, any of those things can be accessed programmatically through, uh, through, through feature script when you create your own custom features. So I think that that is um, what I really am excited about in this latest release of Onshape. And I can't wait to see 
how the surfacing models that you create have been um, going to be enhanced through all of this.